Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out in the heavenly backyard garden. Well, it has finally arrived. The new camera I've been hinting to you about, it's to replace this uh, monochrome camera here, the ZWO uh, ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera, which is a cooled camera, the thermal electrically cooled camera and the filter wheel that goes along with it. These are the one and a quarter inch size filters. And to give you a hint, the new camera doesn't like this small filter wheel. And with the new camera, I got new filters for the larger filter wheel that is needed. These are the two inch Antlia narrowband 4.5 nanometer filters. So what camera did I get? Let's go upstairs and unpackage it. So this is the unidentified new monochrome camera that I've been telling you about. Let's open it up. It just arrived and uh, in a nicely packed box it feels like. Okay. And inside got some foam, some bubble wrap, and more foam empty box and I'm pulling the camera out of the bag yep. and this is the new camera it's the monochrome Poseidon M Pro from Player One uh, it's using the M uh, IMX 571 chip so let's open this uh, up right now and see what's inside the box cut the cellophane off In the box, it's wrapped a uh, USB uh, connector with a C connector. Okay. Another USB C connector with a uh, um, another, another USB cable C to C. Okay, that's it. And a, uh, uh, an, an Allen wrench, which will come in handy. Another Allen wrench. Okay, I'll put this over here. And this is where everything is located, in this nice sturdy case right here. And let's open this up carefully. There's the lens cleaner, air blower. Um, got some expansion, uh, uh, conversion. M48, M48 20 millimeter extender. Now let's open the lens cap and there's a nice rectangular sensor right there. I don't know if you can see this or not. I think you can. How about this one over here? Can you see it? There it is. But anyway, this is the Poseidon and um, it's already got a corrector plate on it for adjustment, an adjustment plate for tilt. Hopefully I won't have to deal with that, um, So, but it's there if you need it. And the uh, tilt screws are right here, so it makes it easier to screw to uh, adjust the tilt. There's four tilt screws every 90 degrees, so that's good. All right, we're going to have to put this to the test on the scope later tonight um, when darkness falls, obviously. But here you have it, the new Poseidon M, the IMX 571. All right, well, let's put this baby to test. More about the camera coming up. Okay, let's briefly talk about the specs of the Player One Poseidon camera. And there you can see it's not the uh, uh, world's cheapest camera at all. It, it, going at uh, $2,300 American dollars, uh, US dollars. So it, it is a, a rather expensive camera in itself. Uh, however, it's, 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 it's a good camera. You get what you pay for, I suppose. Uh, here are some of the uh, quick uh, look at the specs. It's the Sony IMX571 uh, chip that it's using. It's a 16-bit uh, camera. Uh, it has uh, a lot of other features as well as you can see. Um, one of the things I like, I live in a very humid area and it has this anti-dew uh, adjustable dew heater, which is nice. It, it's adjustable and I can crank that uh, adjustment all the way up. So in my high humidity climate here, I can fight off the dew. Even down to uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius, 
um, actual temperature, not delta temperature, uh, I can still fight off the dew. It's got a type C USB input port. A lot of additional information that you can view. I'll have the link to their website on my uh, comment section below. Uh, but there you can see the, uh, the size of the chip. It's rather large. And um, this is interesting here. No, no amp glow whatsoever. Uh, I'm amazed. I don't have to take darks with this camera. I, I haven't taken darks yet, nor have I taken flats or dark flats with it. So I'm very impressed there. Uh, you need to supply your own power supply, but uh, chances are if you're buying this camera, you have a pretty good power uh, distribution system on your rig. And um, also it's got the main USB 3 ports type C connection and an output for devices such as your uh, uh, guide scope or uh, the filter wheel uh, plugs right directly into the camera with a USB-C uh, connector. And the other uh, specifics um, which I usually get lost in are these values here. If you want to find them, they're on their website. Uh, the readout noise, system gain, full well, dynamic range, and all that information is available right there. The camera comes with an M48 connecting um, thread. Uh, most, a lot of the cameras I have in the past have M42 and, and I had the filter, one and a quarter inch filter for the M42, which does not really work well with the M48. You get a lot of vignetting going on with that big donut uh, around the outer edge of the uh, frame that you're losing all that information. If you use an M42 uh, type system like I did, now I'm up to M48 and I'm, I'm fine. While I'm waiting for first light, uh, I have some clouds outside, so I wanted to take a look at the satellite imagery and uh, see where those clouds are and see if I'm, I'm going to be able to get the first light for tonight. And there is the satellite imagery right there. And I, I'm right over here on the south side of Savannah. And uh, this is a, a nighttime picture. This is a better high resolution nighttime picture. And there I am right there. That's where I'm located. And we do have some clouds moving in. However, beyond this patch of clouds over here, uh, is some fairly what somewhat clearing skies so hopefully I'll be able to get the first light with that so let's uh, let's gamble and see what happens here all right and let's go to first light all right the clouds have parted somewhat and uh, I'm getting some stars this was the autofocus here so I'm waiting for first light to come in from the Poseidon uh, there it is the uh, hydrogen alpha filter with the Antlia 4.5 nanometer filter. That's the first light of the Poseidon Player One camera. So I'm very pleased. I was, look how clean the stars are looking as we zoom in here. Boy, I, I tell you, that's a, that's a clean looking picture right there. So with that being said, let's take a look at uh, some of the other images that I processed throughout the night. I took three different images throughout the nighttime hours. And uh, I'm gonna show you those right now in PixInsight. But, now here's the camera right here and the filter wheel as opposed to the smaller uh, ZWO 1600 here. This is the Poseidon Player One um, 571 uh, chip here. Much larger camera and much more expensive. Okay, let's look at some of these first entries and so forth. Uh, throughout the night, I was able to get three targets between the clouds. And I, I got the uh, Pac-Man Nebula. I got the... Um, Rosette Nebula and I'm going to start off with the Horsehead Nebula. Actually that was last but I'm going to start off with that because I want to show you the difference between this filter wheel. When I put this filter wheel on this camera right here there was a difference and let me show you right now real quickly and uh, there it is. <laughs> Look at that uh, vignetting that I had with the smaller filter. So with this larger 571 IMX chip, you need a larger filter. These were one and a quarter inch filters right here. Uh, and you can see uh, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm missing out on all this territory over here around the uh, edges of the, uh, of the uh, field of view. So let's take a look at the view from the Poseidon. And there's the uh, first light, the, uh, uh, actually it's only 20 minutes of, 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 of um, uh, frames here. I only had uh, four five minute frames before the uh, clouds moved in on me. So I have five minute uh, frames. I had t four of those giving me 20 minutes. That's the H alpha. Let's take a look at the uh, sulfur two. And that's in the higher end of the red or the deeper end of the red. And then the oxygen three, which you in, with the horse at Nebula, you, you would not expect to see much except from uh, these brighter stars over here. Notice this star here that it's, it, 
it, no major halo. It's, I mean, it's glowing, but it's a bright star at that. And there you can see the flame nebula. So let's take a look at the process, the, uh, the Hubble palette, the SHO. And here it is right here, uh, the Horsehead Nebula, HSO. And uh, there you can see uh, pretty clear right there. And, and zoom in on that, you can see a really nice horse uh, head there with that. And, and I'm not seeing any major um, halos either, uh, even with the bright star over here. Uh, part of the belt of the uh, Orion Nebula right here. Um, looks pretty clean. What about the um, HSO, hydrogen sulfur oxygen? That's this view here. And, and you know, one thing nice about narrowband filters, you can uh, look at different you know, formats, uh, color combinations and so forth. So I used the, um, the uh, hydrogen for the red, the sulfur for the green, and the oxygen for the blue. And this came out pretty nice. And what about uh, HOO? That's another very famous, uh, popular uh, view. And this is the HOO view uh, from the uh, Horsehead Nebula. Again, uh, each uh, frame, each uh, uh, filter had only about 20 minutes each on, on uh, each uh, view, view. So not a lot to work with there, but that, there, there you have it right there. And let's go, whoops, let's go to the, uh, well, that looks pretty good. Um, let's go to the uh, other views here. And uh, let's look at the Pac-Man Nebula. So here's the Sulfur 2. Here's the Hydrogen Alpha. A lot of rich Hydrogen Alpha glowing red on this area here. And then the O3, the blue. Yeah, there's a lot of blue in the Pac-Man Nebula right there. And uh, then the combination of the, uh, of the three. There you have the SHO, the Hubble palette right there. And uh, what I got here, HOO, the HOO. Uh, shows a lot of the reds and so forth that associated with the Pac-Man Nebula. Again, zooming in, look how clean those stars are. Uh, again, I was looking through some clouds as well. And, uh, but yeah, that, that's pretty clean. Let's bring it over here toward the center. Yeah, I'm zoomed out too much here. There we go. All right. Let's take a look at the um, Rosette Nebula. One of my favorites right here. Here's the Sulfur 2 of the Rosette Nebula. Here is the Oxygen 3. A lot of uh, blue uh, and oxygen uh, in, in the Rosette Nebula. And over here, the Hydrogen Alpha. There's the Hydrogen Alpha. And zooming in on that, look how clean those stars are in the center. New birth. Newborn stars over in this area right here, but look how clean this the combination of the Poseidon Player One camera and the Antonio filters uh, doing a very, very good job uh, with that. And what about the SHO? There's the SHO. Uh, a little heavy on the red there, perhaps, but anyway, still, it looks really good. And then the HOO, uh, there it is. That's really nice. Uh, so there you have it, some of the first pictures from the Poseidon Player One camera or the Player One Poseidon camera, however you want to say it, and the Antlia filters, uh, these filters right here, uh, Antlia, uh, doing a great job uh, and a lot more to come. So, you know, thanks. It, this looks really good. This looks really good. So here it is, the Poseidon C Player One astronomy camera and it's attached to the Orion ED80. And I also have the uh, focal reducer on there, so it goes from F7 to F5.6. With a focal length, instead of 910 millimeters, it reduces it down to 700, and somewhere around 50 uh, millimeters. It's, it's up there on the screen, the actual value itself that's calculated by Nina. Another nice thing about this camera as well is that it's uh, uh, supported through Nina and the other software uh, capturing devices. And in Nina, I can set the cooling for the dew heater uh, rate and also the fan speed, all set with inside the software in Nina. So that's really nice as well. Now, if you would like to help support my channel, please hit the like button. And if you uh, haven't subscribed, please, or please subscribe to my channel if you would like, you don't have to. And uh, you can always buy me a cup of coffee to help support. You know, I drink a lot of coffee. I love my coffee. And uh, also you can join my channel if you would like that. In fact, there are some of my supporters right here. Uh, thank you very much for that. And also, uh, since the last video, which is uh, what, uh, 10 days ago, 
I picked up 100 new subscribers, so I'm up to 6,100 now. So thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing to my channel. And hopefully I'll have a lot more coming up with this camera right here. So thank you for watching my channel and remember the heavens are filled with majestic wonders and they're all up in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, and we got some on the way here and I need it, unless you need rain, clear skies everyone.